it changed his life. It changed my life. And he actually wrote me a message and said, Hey, I just want to thank you for turning me on to this because it changed my life. And that's mission accomplished. I am here with one of my heroes, the carnivore soldier. And he was kind enough to accept my invitation for an interview to learn his incredible story for some of you who don't know it. And I'm going to let Larry tell his story, but just a quick note on how I met Larry is the YouTube algorithm. I was watching carnivore videos and the carnivore soldier came up and I watched several videos and was just not only blown away by the information but by the mission-driven sense of the channel. That the channel is here, not just to entertain, which it does, and not just to teach, which it does, but to really help improve society, help soldiers who are going through difficult times, often after deployment. We all know uh, the damage of PTSD. Uh, we all know the damage and difficulties soldiers coming home face for a variety of reasons. And here was someone who was dedicated to using carnivore diet to help improve lives. And that was inspiring to me as a rabbi, as a human being. And so I wanted to meet Larry and hear his story and learn even more. So Larry, welcome. Can you tell her your carnivore story? Yeah, yeah. Thanks. I really appreciate it. And it's quite humbling to receive accolades like this because I've only been doing this since August. Okay. So my, my story is this. I served in the military. I joined when I was 18. In the Navy, I was on fast attack submarines, nuclear submarines during the Cold War. Very high off tempo, which means we had a lot of missions that were very important back in the 80s. I was in from 84 to 90, which is the end of the Cold War. Arguably, some of the most dangerous times to be in the Cold War with the Soviet Union. We did some very crazy and important missions. So I can say that. I can't really talk about what we did. Still secret, but it was a great adventure for a young man. And I was very healthy. I, in high school, I was an athlete. I ran track. I wrestled. I played rugby in college and in uh, the Navy when I played uh, my last year. At Michigan State, I played rugby. I played some lacrosse down at LSU. So I was always pretty athletic. And then I had gotten out of the Navy in 1990. And I continued running and lifting weights and just physical fitness. I liked being in shape. For one thing, I was single. And it's the best way to attract women is to actually have a good physique, right? And the other thing, it just felt good. I just felt really good when I did it. And so I did pursue physical fitness. No, I was in a sedentary job working in computers and such, which I ended up doing after I got out of the Navy. When the war broke out in 2003, in 2004, I joined the Army National Guard. I didn't want to go full-time, but I did want to contribute. So I joined the National Guard. I put in a medical company and I was there. Seabird or NBC NCO, which is a nuclear biological chemical. I was a basically chemical specialist. They called us dragon soldiers. No one's heard this. This is all in your channel. Okay. We go through uh, training with chemicals and we actually go into, I'm one of the only people who probably ever met who's gone into an active agent chamber where they bring in real nerve gas while we're in there to show us that our suits are going to work. There's actually observation windows a pie where people are watching us do this down from other countries. So that's how I started. And then I switched over to signal. I actually got to be a platoon leader. And then I turned 50 because I went back in, I was in my late thirties, but I still had gas in the tank. I still felt really athletic. I felt like I could do stuff. And then when I get my late forties, I started putting on some weight too. And they, my shoulder, my ankle, some other things from the military. So I was on what's called a walking profile which means I would speed walk during the PT test, which is like a fourth March, which is still hard, but right. I just didn't, I used to love to run. I really right. loved running. My son loves running. He runs cross country and track. He's 14. I'm envious. Now I, now here's what's great though. I thought I would never run again. When I retired, I retired at 53 years old with these injuries. And it's a sad thing because right now I could go back and be a better soldier than I was that last five years, probably the last 10 years I was in right now. Wow. Because Mentally, motivationally, you go back today and do this job better. I know I could because I know my capability. I'm in the gym this morning, just having an insane workout. It's epic. It just feels so good. I, and I look at the history, look at like the, the Roman soldiers. They had soldiers that were in their 60s still fighting. And I believe because I'm almost 60, I'm 58. I, and do you so credit I, it all with carnivore? Do you re it's really that the diet's the driving factor that's it is, it, it, oh, yeah. 100 the driving factor. And it's actually, 
I'm a Christian, so I credit it to God because I think our bodies just designed so amazingly that if you just clear out all the poison, it just takes care of business. It's not necessarily the diet that's doing it. What it clearing all the poisons out and providing just what it needs to do its business. Right. And then when your mitochondria and everything's firing and your brain's firing, right? You don't have brain fog, you don't have depression, you don't have anxiety. It's all about the why. We talk about that, the why. You have to have a why to make this happen. And losing 13 pounds for spring break is not a why. Okay. So some people's why gets so big that they actually start a YouTube channel. Some people's why gets so big that they publish a book. And some people's why gets so big that they actually start a convention like Hack Your Health KetoCon. People's whys can drive different things. And I think that's super important. And that's what I like to try to stress is getting a why so you can get your mission down here. My mission carnivore, right? We talked about that. So that's my story. So I, I retired in 2019 is bad timing because I retired in November. So just a few months before the disease broke out. I won't name it because I don't know if we still can do that on YouTube. Yeah. But when the disease broke out, I, I, I remember I, I, I basically lost my job. I was doing wireless architecture in oil and gas. All, when they shut the economy down, they cut all contracts. So all my jobs went away. And it's yeah, like for a while, I was sitting on the couch, depressed, scared, a, a anxious, worried about my house note, all these things. I didn't know what was going to worried about everything, worried about this disease. I thought it was real. I, I was concerned like you should be being an NBC guy. I knew about biological attack and vectors and everything. I, I craved it all that. And so it felt very real to me. So anyway, I blowed up to 280 pounds mm -hmm. over the next year or year and a half. 280. Now I'm six foot three. I'm a big guy, so I can hide it pretty well. But I think some pictures, you can see my face was just inflamed. My whole body was inflamed. And I felt terrible all the time. Um, mental health was in terrible shape. I was depressed. I didn't feel like half the man I used to be. Not even half. I was like, I didn't feel like a man anymore. I felt like just, and I really felt that my, my life was just on a, a, a slow slope down. I was just going to, hold on and try not to die too young and try to be there for my son. Hopefully I'll see him graduate college and maybe get married. But if I'm super lucky, I'll see a grandchild, right? That's what I was thinking. Cause he's 14. I'm, back then he was what? 12, 11 to be fair. But right. still, I was thinking that's what my mindset was. Now that I have all this health, I don't fear cancer. I don't feel all fear Alzheimer's. My mom died from Alzheimer's at 68, 10 years older than I am right now. And her last 10 years were terrible. I used to fear that a lot genetics all, but I don't fear it anymore because I know it's type three diabetes. Okay. I, Handled. No problem. I know about cancer now. I know that it's a defect causing cancer and then what causes mitochondrial damage, right? I know seed oils, sugars, grains. I know what to stay away from. And if I get it, I know what feeds cancer. It's glutamine and glucose. And I know how to handle that. Cut glucose out of your diet, take a glutamine inhibitor or eat a high protein. I just know how, and I know people that have done it. So I'm not afraid of these things anymore. Fear is gone. Now I'm planning for future. I'm planning for, I'm going to start buying houses and renting them out. I'm going to start, I'm just planning. It's going, it's a different mindset. I, I feel young again. I feel athletic. I'm sprinting. I'm in the gym and I'm sprinting. I sprinted today. I did five sprints. Felt fantastic. I feel like an athlete again, which is the first time it's happened in probably 20 years. And it is pretty, pretty dang amazing. That is such an amazing story, Larry. Just the, the trajectory from you having these extraordinary experiences in the army and then just having this difficulty and experiencing that almost sort of sense of depression at the beginning of the, right. the illness and then emerging out of it and then sharing what you've learned. What inspired you to start the channel? Was it just an excess of energy? Obviously, you're a high energy guy. Was it that I, I got to share this? Yeah, you wouldn't have called me a high energy guy when I was before I was on this, because I was not motivated. I didn't even like doing dishes. Um, I would pile stuff up. I would just sit on the couch. I didn't, walking the dog was an imposition. These are things I love doing now. I walk my dog several times a day now. I go barefoot a lot, get grounded too. But I can tell you, it was, my why got so big. We have to have a why. We talked about that. My why got so big because I started sharing with people and they started, I started seeing changes in their lives. And then they started sharing with people I'd never met. And they'd report back like, hey man, I shared it with someone else. They totally lost weight. They can't. I'm thinking, man, what would happen if I just expanded my net a little bit? Just what, what could I do? And then I remember I was doing a, a video with Poco Moonshine. I don't know if you know sure. Poco Moon, mm -hmm. but uh, like he said, guy. yeah, Mission Carnivore. And that's where I got the name. And I was like, that's a great name. 
And I realized also that my mental health had gotten so much better and so fast. So I started in March 22nd. So this was my one year car anniversary a few weeks back. And then in August is when I started this channel though. And then I started getting all these veterans and first responders come back to me saying they connected with me because of my background. And when I realized that, I'm like, yeah, we don't like talking necessarily to people and sharing with people that aren't, that don't, haven't been where we've been or don't, we've done that kind of thing. So it's just nice to have another veteran or first responder. And I, I did work. If you look back here, that's the, see, that's the San Mateo police department. I was at the San Mateo police department for five years after the dot coms crashed, uh, I went there and then went back into tech. So I, I have a background in, in working at uh, oh, first responders involved. and also in the military. So I just, I connect with them and my, my delivery style. Being a chief, being a trusted advisor for officers, I just give that bluff, right? Here's the bottom line up front. That's the way it is. And I, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. We don't need sugar. We don't eat sugar at carnivores. So no need to sugarcoat anything. I just can tell you the way it is. Now, I also, like I said, I'm a Christian and I, I don't say you have to be a Christian or you, even, you don't know, have to even have faith. You can believe in evolution. I still do this. It still works. And it, it's just a, it's just a wonderful thing, but I do come from a Christian slant too. I do like to talk about my faith. I'm a rabbi, so I'm obviously yeah. not Christian. We have the same God. And I, to me, the spiritual and the mental benefits of carnivore are much greater. The weight loss is great, and that, but that's almost like an extra. It's the clarity, the energy, the focus. And one of the things I'm really curious about, obviously, to be a successful soldier and a leader, you have to be disciplined. You have to be able to command people, to involve people, to work as part of a team. But do you think your military background made you more likely to succeed as a carnivore. What I'm trying to get at is the 90 to 95% of people who try to be carnivore fail. I wish, it, I, I hope it's lower than that, but let's just, what leads someone to succeed in carnivore? How do you get them from being just someone who's interested in it to someone who can really experience the benefits? My favorite thing to talk about. I don't know if you saw my, my video where I talked about the F grow count. Did yes. The $25,000. Yeah. 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 That was great. Right. right. So that's the why, right? When someone says I could never do it or I, I fail, it's because they didn't have a why or they didn't believe in the vehicle. It's because we've been in these vehicles in the past, all these diets I've done them. I've done the alternative day fasting, the intermittent fasting. I've done keto. I did the Atkin diet. I, all these over the years I've done them all and I've fallen off all of them because all of them have the same problem. You're managing your addiction. You're not getting rid of it. And it's like having an alcoholic and saying, you can have one beer a day. It's not going to work for an alcoholic. It may work right. for a week, but at some point, something's going to hit them and they're going to hit the booze right. hard and it's going to be over. Right. And that's exactly what happened to me every time. And I, and other people I talk to, same thing. So if you're trying to manage an addiction, if you look in the history in the 1920s, 1910s, 1930s, they treated alcoholism and opium addiction with, uh, fasting. Right. And this is a fasting mimicking diet. Right. So right. there's something about fasting that changes something in the brain chemistry, I believe, that makes it easier to quit other things. Right. And, but you have to get past that. And that's, it's, listen, it's a hard ride for the first four weeks. First two weeks are really hard, but you have to believe in this vehicle. And if you don't believe in the vehicle, let me just look at my pictures, look at whoever pictures you want or follow a story that you connect with. I don't care who it is. There's so many stories out there. You can find one. You have to believe in that. And then you just have to write yourself that check. You have to, so like when someone said, well, I could never give up salad or I could never make it through Christmas on carnivore because I'm going to a party. And then if I took that same person and said, listen, if I wrote you this $25,000 check and we put it in escrow on a contract and all you had to do is do carnivore for 30 days through Christmas, right? Through your birthday party, whatever. And at the end, you get $25,000. How many people would have a problem? Zero. Because they believe in that escrow account, right? And they know that they can get through it. And they, listen, no one could pay me $25,000 to go the other way now. No one could pay me $100,000 or $200,000. They could write me a check for probably a million dollars. I wouldn't do it right now. I would not go back because you can't buy time and you can't buy life experience. And I, and that's what I'm. That's what I'm gaining. I'm gaining time. I'm gaining uh, life quality. I'm gaining time with my son, time with loved ones, time to enjoy life. I'm getting a mindset where I can actually enjoy life and I'm not surviving, not strapped in and on a slow decline. I'm enjoying life. And this is something you can't buy. 
So, yeah. And when you say, when you say your rabbi is great, I don't know if you saw me interview the, the pastor, the chaplain on my channel. No, oh, yeah, yeah. I so there is a chaplain for an, he's a veteran too. He's a Navy chaplain on an aircraft carrier. He's an air wing chaplain and he's carnivore now. And we talked about this, man, when people come to you with their problems, because people don't come to the chaplain with spiritual problems. They don't. They come to the chaplain when they have legal problems, relationship problems, whatever other problems there are. That's what the, and I'm sure with you, the same thing, right? When they come oh, with yeah. problems, it's about like, I have a problem with this chapter in the Torah or the Bible. No, that's right. not what it is. It's like I have a problem with bills. I have a problem with relationship. I have a problem with addiction, whatever it is, right? I have a problem. I have, and now not only can he give spiritual advice, he can give physical advice, which is amazing. Yes. Way more than a doctor can do. It's, I can do it. It's so amazing that you can help. Now they still have to follow it. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. But it's just such an amazing tool. And that's what I see it as a tool in a tool bag that I can, sh I've shared it with veterans and I've seen veterans turn completely around, get off drugs and- Yeah, you know, tell, that's what I was, t t is there a story you can share? Obviously uh, confidential, but is there yeah, somebody you've talked to? Yeah. There's a guy that served in the army in the Gulf War and uh, he was doing okay, but he was in a veteran group with me and uh, he's a good friend and we're the old guys in the group now. So we're in the fifties, right? We're like the, all these guys are young. They're all young guns out of the, the last couple of wars. And we're from the old school, the eighties and nineties, right? So we're a different generation. Uh, and I could see he was struggling with things and we just had this discussion. I said, listen, man. I am doing this. And he saw the change in me. That's the great thing. He saw me change from 280 in six months. I went down to 235 pounds or something like my all of my college playing weight in six months, never once being hungry, never. I, I just ate when I was hungry and ate, ate real food, just ate meat. And it's amazing to lose weight like that, that fast. It, my whole demeanor had changed. Uh, I had everything changed about me and he noticed that. So we started talking and I, and I told him, I'm going to try that. And he did, he started, he did some half step stuff and started out with 90% carnivore and then 95%. And then he just said, screw it. I'm going full blown. And he went in and man, the guy just, ate, he changed. And now he's got this girlfriend I see on, I haven't talked to him in a couple of months or about a month, but I see his, it looks like he's doing pretty well. And he actually wrote me a message and said, Hey, I just want to thank you for turning me on to this because it's changed my life. That's amazing. Listen, that's mission accomplished. Mission carnivore could be over right there. I've done. Exactly what I want. If one person, that was my mission. If one person could change your life, that would be fantastic. And it's already happened. So I'm just going to keep driving. I'm not going to quit, obviously. It's amazing. But it is. That, so, so, I mean, amazing. and through me just sharing, just it, it, listen, he didn't buy any program. He didn't add an app to his phone. He didn't have to follow any recipes or he just ate meat and salted and drank water. And it changed his life. It changed my life. It's changing. Well, my neighbor next door, I won't say his name. Sorry. He was, he was on, oh, this is amazing. This is, okay. This is, a, some people call it coincidence. I call it a God wink. I, I bought this house. The house next door was empty. Neighbor moves in. I don't really meet him for a while, right? He's just in and out of his garage. And one day his son comes running over. His son's a college kid and he's panicked. And he's, listen, my, my dad's gone. His dog got out and he got this beautiful Doberman. So his son didn't know what to do. So I'm like, all right, let's look on the Facebook group. I know this group. I'm in it. Uh, it's a neighborhood group. They are very good on dogs. They'll, we'll find it. We did. We found it. So my neighbor gets home. He comes over, introduced himself. He's from New York. He, he moved down to Texas and we started talking. He's a tech guy too. He does firewall. So we start talking and it turns out he walks in, he sees my submarine stuff. He goes, you were on submarines? I was like, yeah, he goes, I was. So a submariner moved right next to me. And not only is this submariner, but submariner from the 1980s. Listen, there were only 80 submarines in the 1980s. And there's about a hundred guys in every submarine. So that's not many people. That's a small pool for the decade. That's not a big pool of people that, that would just move right next to you. It was pretty amazing. So he went carnivore, changed his life too. He's off all his meds. He lost 30 pounds and he's a smaller guy. He's so down to 190, I think now. So it's anyway. But he's, yeah, this totally changed my life. I'm so happy. So it's happening everywhere and it's my mission. It's just my mission to keep going. Mental health. Yeah. Someone who was in the army and obviously when you're in the army, there's a sense of you have to listen to authority, follow authority, follow yeah. your leader. And yet when we are carnivore, we are in a sense going against, it's not really authority, 
but the general guidelines of government, of health officials. What do you make of that? What, why has this, why is this still so countercultural? Yeah. And uh, so I just did a movie review today of They Live from John Carpenter from the 80s. I don't know if you remember that movie, 88. No. The guy puts on sunglasses. It's a sci-fi movie. Puts on some sunglasses and all the signs turn into the real messaging. And then he takes them off and he sees like computer ads and movie ads, and, but he puts them on and it says, obey, no independent thought, mm -hmm. reproduce, sleep. Oh, I can see this. But yeah, it's fantastic. It's streaming on Amazon. So check it out. Okay. And John Carpenter was in his heyday when he did The Thing and he did all these great movies back then. So this was, and he did the soundtrack. He's really good. It's a mindset movie, but yeah, th that is the counterculture. And, and this is something that we talk about in Christianity too, is submission, right? Yeah. Submission yeah. to authority. And so when people talk about submission, like most people think we need a marriage, the woman should, the woman's in the, well, the biblical model, she submits to the husband, but that's, there's a, but that don't work. <laughs> yeah, the husband has to be in submission to God. Yeah, that's right. And if he's not, then no one should submit to him. So if we have a, this is very simple in the military. It's exactly the same. If I have a colonel who is just out doing war crimes that I know aren't sanctioned by our government or command, I have no obligation to follow him. In fact, I have an obligation to stop him. So it's the same thing. So we have, now we have proof, we have evidence out the Yazoo that this is the wrong way to eat, that all this science is bought and paid for by big companies. There's a fat phobia. And there's a, um, a cholesterol phobia that are unfounded completely. In fact, yeah. they're harmful. If you follow yes. a well, low cholesterol yes. diet, you're more likely to commit suicide in a violent 100%. way. You're more likely to do impulsive acts such as gambling. You're more likely to be addicted to things like pornography or whatever. Any, and, and you look at addictions and every plant, every addiction is plant-based pretty much. You can think of them all cocaine, nicotine, caffeine, they're all, they're all there. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Just the, the counterculture idea, but we have all the information. So we have to, we are actually, I, I think it's our duty to go against that message to get yes. the truth up because this we're submitting to a higher power, the way we we're are, designed, right. the way we're created. It is, it's a higher power and it's, it's factually, it's evidence-based. I mean, it's, you know, you don't, like I said, you can either think we're designed this way or we evolved this way, created, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's the way it is that we are designed to eat this way. And that, that's the important thing. And the evidence is out there, man. And everyone's like an N equals one anecdotal thing. But when you have enough of these tens of thousands of hundreds of thousands of anecdotal N equals one results that match up, you have a theory. Now you have data points in the theory, right? And right. that theory is strong and it's getting stronger every day. What's your advice to somebody who comes to you almost just there? Maybe they just left the military. They see yeah. one of your videos on Facebook. They don't, they're trying to lose weight. They're struggling a little bit being out of the army. What's your first sort of go-to piece of advice? How do you get them started? I do send them my getting started video series, which I have like the first 30, 60, 90 days, what to expect. And, uh, but I would tell them we, you can do anything for 30 days because you've yeah. been in the military and hurry up and wait and eat crappy food and sit out in the outpost. You've done everything. You've done it on a ship, wherever you've been, you've done 30 days of hell somewhere. And then I would just say that put yourself through 30 days on this and see what happens. Test it, test it. That's all you gotta say. It doesn't cost you anything. Yeah. That, that's the beauty of this. The military, we are the tip of the spear. We are the warrior class and we don't like to go to doctors. We don't like to go to counseling. Oh. We don't like to see this stuff. We don't even like going to the chaplain. I never went. I felt that was a weakness. I didn't want to be seen going to the chapel. Because I had the other guys know, hey, what's went to the chapel. He's got something wrong. So we just stayed away. That's because, so if there's a way we can handle our business ourselves, that is the desired opportunity we'd like to take, the avenue we'd like to take. And that's why I like to tell, listen, just do it yourself. You don't have to tell anyone. You don't even have to tell anyone you're doing it. Just do it. Just sit right. back, eat meat, and see what it does and journal it. If you want to watch your, your weight will go down. And I always say, come for the weight loss, stay for the non-scale victories. Cause they're way better, but the weight loss is sexy in the beginning. It's wow. If you look at pictures of me at 280 and 234, 233 and muscular. The difference is amazing, but it's the non-scale victories that are more amazing, right?
So uh, I would tell people just, uh, yeah, 30 days. You really need about 100 days to be a full carnivore, I think. But 30 days, you'll get enough where you'll know that, okay, this is real. That's when I, I was going to take 30 days and try it and see what it was like. And at the end of 30 days, I'm like, no way I'm stopping, man. This is amazing. I lost 24, 25 pounds. All these things, my energy was already back. My, my mental clarity was back. You know, like, there's no way I'm stopping. So I went 60 and then I went 90 and then just on and on. Boom. Oh. Yeah. You, you mentioned a couple of times, you're a Christian, you're a believer. And yeah. it, has this affected your faith, your sense of a purpose or just your, yeah, your relationship with God? Has this affected it in any way? Yeah. I think that pray as much as I should. I, but I think of God a lot more. I do. I, I get, I'm an app that sends me scripture every day. So I, I look at it and I'm, and it, I think my mental clarity is better and I'm able to connect better with him, in my opinion. That's what I feel. And it's just, it, this way of eating makes everything easier. How about that? It's like having cheat codes to life, including yeah. spirituality. In the gym, Agreed. I don't get fatigued as well. When I'm around the house, doing chores is not boring. It's fun. Studying the Bible or reading the Bible is not boring. It's interesting. And I really feel more of a connection. I think we're supposed to be like this. Our brain's supposed to operate like this. Yes. So if you have faith, it'll be an amplifier. It's what we call in the military a force multiplier. Right. Because you already got the force and this is going to multiply it. That's great. I love that. That's such a beautiful answer. One thing that you mentioned in a recent video that really hit home for me is you talked about the, forget the zones, and you talked about three feet, 50 feet, 100 feet. Yeah, it, that yeah, was yeah. just a good, can you no, explain no, no. that? Three, three meters, meters, 50 meters, 100 meters. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the, the three meters out. So that, comes from Vietnam, the bouncing Betty bombs. So they were talking about IEDs or the bouncing Betty bombs. And if, they, if you're in a three meter zone, you're pretty much dead. If you're in yeah, a 50 yeah. meter zone, you have a good chance of survival. If you're a hundred meter zone, you're safe. And so I was talking about carnivores being in those zones, right? When you start off and some carnivores need a lot of guidance in the beginning. And, but once in like your first, I would say the three meter zone would probably be your first two to three, maybe four weeks. If you get past that, you're into your 50 meters zone. And now you've felt it and you're like, okay, now, now cravings aren't as important, but you're going to deal with other issues like social issues and things that you didn't even anticipate, right? Cause you didn't realize that once your relationship with food changes and it's no longer the primary source of entertainment, which it seems to be for everyone, their focus. You look at these dating apps. Like when I'm, when I was on dating apps and I was looking at it and like almost every girl's finding your favorite restaurant. What restaurant do you want to go to? I'm like, I, none. I, I really want to just cook a steak or yeah. a burger. I don't want to go out. And it's so when you, that's probably the hundred meters of the, and then when you get past the 50 meters on, you get past that into the hundred meters. I was like hundred days out. You could almost even say that that's your hundred days out is your hundred meters. on. once you're past that, you're an autopilot. You're a mature carnivore. You're honing your game. You're learning more, you're learning your body. Cause my body's different than yours. Yeah. I'll react differently and I'm doing different things. I'm lifting in the gym really heavy a bunch of times. So I'm eating right now between one and two dozen eggs a day raw. And that's the, uh, you don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. But for me, that's great. And then I'm eating. Do you, some, do, a rap, do you do a Rocky style? You bust them in the, in the cup. But I'm whipping it up and I'm adding a little bit of grass fed protein powder, which is basically milk, but it's, and it's, so I do a little bit of that and I add salt to it and nice. ice. So I blend it with ice. So it's nice. It's like a shake. Like an egg uh, shake. So, yeah. Yeah. It's good. An egg shake. It's like an eggnog kind of, yeah. Um, but yeah. I, I think that when you get the, the three meter zone is the, the most dangerous zone. And that's when you have to get through. And that's the hardest. You're going to fight your cravings. You're going to fight all the messaging. You're going to fight. It's hard. And you, every humans want the path of least resistance typically. So that's just the way we are. We don't yeah. choose a certain way to do things. But you just made me realize is with most important things in life, there is a hard period that you have to go through. If you're going to be a doctor, you got to go through residency. And that's really hard. You're up 36 hours. To become a soldier, you got to go through basic training, right? And, you, and that's tough. But you're doing that as part of a group, typically. And the group momentum and dynamic can help carry you through the difficult times. One of the difficult parts of carnivore is many of us are doing it alone. Yes. Maybe you have a spouse, you know, that's, but that most of us, it re, that, and that makes it harder when you really have to have that 
kind of self-discipline to get through it. And that's why community. One of the reasons I started this YouTube channel was because my wife would make fun of me because I'd be watching a whole bunch of carnivore videos. And she says to me, they're all saying the same thing over and over. You've heard all this before. Why are you listening to it again? I'm like, I need the reinforcement. I need it. Even if I have heard this story, even if I haven't, even if I know the cholesterol stuff, I want to hear it again because it's going against the wider culture and I need that reinforcement. And that's one of the great services of YouTube because yet yeah, vir virtual community is wonderful. We, we meet people online. It's a wonderful community, but still when you're at work and you got to have lunch, you somehow need to have that strength because in some ways you're alone at that moment. And I think that that makes this even harder than, I don't know, harder. It's just a different type of challenge. But the same principle applies. If you get through the really difficult part, you get through that 30 days or two weeks or however long it is, then that three meter zone, then yeah. it becomes easier and better. Yeah. And in the army, when you go to a, a basic training or a school, they pair you up with a battle buddy so you guys can work together to get through the school because it's yeah. hard and it, they know that. So yeah. I recommend find Facebook groups, whatever groups you have, yeah. or although there's plenty of in-person live meetups, I've hosted two already in the Austin area. People come all the way from Houston and Dallas. Right. And yeah, I'm going to one in San Antonio. Someone else is hosting and Dr. Barry's going to be there. That's pretty cool. That's next weekend. So I've been here. That's heard. awesome. Ontario, San Antonio area. He's going to be in San Antonio on the 6th. I'm going to tell my buddy who's a reverend near yep. San Antonio. He would love that. He's really good. Oh, what's his? Yeah. Jimmy. I've got a, uh, I've got a Facebook page. You can go to my page and, and find the information on it. It's Jimmy Nelson. Pruitt. Or you can have him contact me directly. Carver Soldier, gmail.com. That's fine. Okay. Awesome. Larry, this has been absolutely fantastic. I, your story is even more amazing than I thought at first. I, I'm so grateful for your time, for your inspiration. I know my viewers are going to absolutely love this. Thank you again. Great, man. It was such a good time okay. meeting you, and I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. You'll have to come on my channel sometime. I'll do my podcast, The uh, Carnival Way. Love to have wise insight, man, because it's funny because your wife talked about it. people say the same thing over and over. The Bible and the Torah haven't changed. We'll still read it over and over, right? Because you need that message. We need to be reminded on a regular basis. So I think that's the purpose. It's great. That's so true. Yeah. Thanks again. All right. Talk to you soon. All right, buddy.